What's up guys and welcome back. It looks like the effects of a recession on the value of Bitcoin has been a subject of much debate and speculation in recent months. While some experts have argued that Bitcoin's decentralized nature and lack of correlation to traditional markets make it a safe haven during economic downturns, others have argued that the volatility and lack of regulation in the crypto market make it a risky investment during times of economic uncertainty. Well, let's dive in and break down why Bitcoin has a larger history of performance in recessions than many know or even consider. One of the main arguments in favor of Bitcoin as a safe haven during a recession is its decentralized nature. Unlike traditional fiat currency, which are issued and controlled by central banks and government cucks, Bitcoin is decentralized and operates on a peer-to-peer -peer network. This means that it is not subject to the same economic and political pressures that traditional currencies are, and is therefore less likely to be affected by a recession. Because, as we can listen to the great Dr. Ron Paul, those central planners, the Fed, and their ilk, the cantillionaires, are the creators of the business cycle, the booms and the busts, and the ever-depreciating value of their money. Why are we forced to use money that steals from us and benefits the privileged cantillionaires class? I don't know, but you should send that letter to your local and state bureaucrats. All right, lay it on them, Dr. Paul. And here we are, the great Dr. Ron Paul, 15 years ago, predicting, uh... Predicting the future much as he did, much of his career is one of the greatest Austrian economists of our lifetimes and in general. So let's check it out. We're in a recession. I believe we're in a recession. I think it's going to get a lot worse. If we continue to do the wrong things that we've done in the past, that uh, it's going to be delayed just as what happened in, in the depression. But you have to understand that overstimulation in an economy by artificially low interest rates by the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve is the source of the recession. The recession is, has been predictable. We just don't know exactly when it'll come. And if you saw the, those other guys looking around like, what is he talking about? Oh, no, he's telling, talking about the Fed. Oh, God, our jig is up. God, we got to try to discredit this guy. He might save the country. Ah, man, it's wild. Hearing this in 2008 and then seeing, like, the state capitulate and the deterioration of faith in the state and where that has led and how Bitcoin fits into that picture. So let's continue. If you do the wrong thing, it's going to last for a long time. The boom period comes when they just pour out easy credit. And it teaches people to do the wrong things. There's a lot of malinvestment, un, uh, debt that goes in the wrong directions. Consumers do the wrong things. And businessmen do the wrong thing. So we have to attack this and understand the importance of Austrian theory of the business cycle. If you don't, we're going to continue to do this. And the longer you delay the recession, the worse the recession is. And we've delayed a serious recession for a long time. The housing market is already in depression. And a lot of people hurting. The standard of living in this country is going down. Look at what's happening to the dollar. And what is being offered by the Federal Reserve and Treasury and everybody in Washington? Lower interest rates. Well, lower interest rates is the problem. Artificially low interest rates is the artificial stimulus which causes the bubble, which, pre pre which allows the inevitable recession to come. So what we need to do is de deal with monetary policy and not pretend that artificial stimulus by more spending is going to help. Oh, the great doctor laying it on us. Man, I, I, just, I just love and appreciate everything that man has done in his career and life for liberty. Now, there are several arguments against the idea that Bitcoin is a safe haven during a recession. Uh, one of the main criticisms of Bitcoin is its volatility, which can make it a risky investment during times of economic uncertainty. The value of Bitcoin can fluctuate dramatically in a short period of time. And you know, the shifty peats of the world and those Jamie Dimon cucks and this volatility can make it difficult for investors to predict its future value. And maybe so. That is, if you view the world through the lens of a lemming and only are able to keep 15-minute attention spans at any given moment and all you can do is follow the current thing, you may not reap the rewards the long-term volatility and value proposition Bitcoin delivers. Fiat time preference is bad for you. And don't take it from me. Take it from author of the Bitcoin and fiat standard, Saifedean. The average fiat currency or total fiat currency supply increases at around 14% per year. So you go from 2% to 14%. Well, 14% means you lose 50% in five years. So if you put that uh, fiat, your average fiat paper, you put it under your mattress or under the floorboard and you wait five years, it's lost half of its value. It can buy you half of what it could buy you when you put it there. So let's say you have enough money to buy a house, but you don't want to buy a house now. So you put the money under your floorboard. Five years later, that money will buy you half the house that you wanted. So 
What that means is that our ability to provide for the future is massively compromised, and that just makes the future more uncertain. And as the and he's going to get into how this uncertainty of the future and almost how, oh, what is what is the book? Alice in Wonderland of the Red Queen and how she says down here, you have to run as fast as you can just just to stay normal or j- just to keep on pace. And that's kind of the running the rat race of the fiat world. You're constantly running this race. You're working harder. You're picking up more hours. You're trying to mine all that fiat. But that fiat is disintegrating and burning and it just destroys your nature or view and value in the future and your hope in the future and your ability to save and provide for a better future. And that destroys your mindset. You start living in this right here, right now, the fast food world economy and that makes you fat, obese, slovenly, poor, and leads you to be reliant on the big daddy state. And that's what they want. It is more uncertain. We discount the future heavier. And I think this is an extremely powerful way of understanding all the bad things or many of the bad things that have happened in the 20th century, people's time preference has risen. And this is really the reversal of the process of civilization. And that's why the subtitle of the book is not really just a hyperbole. It really is an alternative to human civilization. Um, fiat is a way of just getting everybody to become a debt slave with no potential for thinking for the future, and therefore little prospect for civilization, the little prospect for investing in the future, for wanting to provide for the world, wanting to provide a better life for the world, for for your future self. And so everybody's just constantly becoming more and more high time preference, becoming more and more present oriented. And so you see this reflected in families, you see it reflecting in people, you know, they spend their youth um, playing around and enjoying essentially eternal adolescence because it isn't as pressing to provide for your future because a you don't have a very reliable way of providing for your future and b the reason you don't have a way of reliably providing for your future is because your money is screwed and the reason your money is screwed is that the government is able to take your money so therefore the government can provide for you for your future so instead of working for your own future um, you know instead of investing in your own family you just go and do what um, all 20th century people do which is vote harder and you think that, you know, if I just vote harder, then my government is going to give me all the things that I want. Incredible stuff from the great Saifa Dean. And make sure you tune in, listen, and read everything he puts out there. The man is incredible. I would, I would say he's one of the leaders of this, this new Austrian economics and the rise of Bitcoin and sound money and Austrian economics kind of all going hand in hand. It's pretty incredible. Now, additionally, some especially in the institutional realm deem the lack of regulation in the market also makes it a risky investment during a recession. Now, we've kind of gone through both approaches. In summary, ultimately, the effects of a recession on the value of Bitcoin will depend on a variety of factors, including the severity of the recession, the overall state of the global economy, and the level of investor confidence in the market. Let's go ahead and take a look at Lynn Alden. I mean, one of the best analysts in the game and see her take and we'll react to it as we go. Let's say as an example, we have a as you say, a disinflationary type of recession, how would Bitcoin price be impacted? What's, what's your view on that? Well, so we had a recession officially in 2020. It was a brief one. It was an unusual okay. one. And obviously mm. Bitcoin did do briefly terrible. I mean, you know, Bitcoin collapsed, everything, pretty much everything collapsed and then went back up. Um, yeah. If we look at it in terms of say economic cycles, so PMI cycles, so rising and falling, you know, periods of economic acceleration and deceleration, uh, which are not necessarily inflations, but can become, uh, you know, that they can become recessions, but are not necessarily recessions. Generally, we've had an environment where Bitcoin does better when economic growth is accelerating, um, and it's generally done poorly when economic growth is decelerating. Uh, and so that would that would collaborate your view that it generally does not do well. Now, what she's getting at there is its current behavior because of most people, how they read it, how they know that it works, and they haven't done the homework, and institutions look at it as a risk on asset currently, but... That's because they're still trying to work it out. And also something you're going to see Lynn talk about is how the Fed and the Treasury have kind of painted themselves into a corner. And I want you guys, now this is a thesis I've had for a little while. So since 2008, you'll see the liquidity injections from the market. 
and how each time they do so, they quantitatively ease its effect, last a shorter duration of time, but the injection each time is multitudes greater. And this looks just like the Weimar cycle in chart, how each intervention, its impact lessened with more devaluation to follow, and you get in this DEBT cycle. So maybe in the short term, uh, in a recession, in a short term, just like 2020, there may be an instant, the fear effect, and these things that may make people seek um, liquidity elsewhere. But then its long-term thesis is even more powerful as more people lose faith in these institutions, the central banks, and the central planners, and Bitcoin continues to gain free advertising from these inept central planners around the world. At least in the early phases of recession. Um, another mm. big thing that it's correlated with is global liquidity. So if you look at global money supply, global M2, broad money supply, and then you translate it all back to dollars, uh, because that's kind of the chief funding currency of the world, that's kind of the unit of account of, of international trade. Um, and, and so if, if you translate it all back into dollars, there's two obviously variables that will impact that year over year figure. One is how much are how much printing is happening, uh, you know, basically how much are different currencies expanding their money supply, and then two, how strong is the dollar relative to those currencies? Because when you translate all back into dollars, obviously the strength of the dollar relative to those currencies will matter. And generally speaking, and this is actually a pretty tight correlation, when global money supply measured in dollars is going up pretty rapidly, uh, that's a great environment for Bitcoin. Uh, when it's going down, when it when basically that that year v year rate is rolling over, or even stops growing entirely, uh, that's usually a pretty bad environment for Bitcoin. And in that sense, what Bitcoin is hedging is not price inflation, but monetary inflation or debasement, if you can call it. Basically, it, it, it's it's basically a one of the more pure plays on liquidity. Um, mm. And so I, I think that's that's probably the key thing to watch is what's happening with liquidity, and what's happening with the rate of change of economic growth. Uh, and so I do think that when you have falling liquidity and economic deceleration, yes, you'd expect Bitcoin to do pretty poorly, which is what we've seen over the past, especially the past six months. And then when you have a bottoming out of liquidity, uh, you know, monetary easing, and you know, you kind of uh, you're kind of in the middle of the recession, maybe turning up. That's when I would expect, you know, probably Bitcoin to catch a bottom and, and do pretty well. Man, make sure you are following Lynn Alden and taking in all that amazing information she delivers. And w what's amazing about Lynn and what makes her an amazing analyst is she doesn't get tied to any individual thesis or bias. She always ha uh, is constantly going through praxeology and constant if-then statements based on what's happening and what can what can come forth there. So she's very pragmatic, rational, and approaches things uh, very well. So we appreciate that. Make sure you're checking out Lynn Alden. So let's continue. So we've seen many say Bitcoin doesn't have a track record when it comes to recessionary behavior, that investors should pay heed as a potential recession looms around the corner, but not so fast, my friend. There's also a variety of different potential causes of a recession. For example, the Wor World Bank president, David Malpas, said recently that the war in Ukraine and the impact on food and energy prices and the availability of fertilizer could trigger a global recession. Aside from inflation, other potential causes in include a Fed mistake, which may be unavoidable because it's held interest rates close to zero for so long, leaving it no choice but to raise interest rates while the economy slows and debt to GDP is over 130%. So here we are. We're entering a, a period of some may see global economic turmoil that we have maybe never experienced. And you may be wondering, will Bitcoin go up in the recession. Unfortunately, no one can know with full certainty the answer to this question and as uh, as we can't predict the future. And as we discussed with Lynn, the process of being a true analyst, constant if-then statements and praxeology until the most real rational outcome finally presents itself. With all that being said, it is encouraging to note that Bitcoin was created during the last global recession as a way to mitigate the financial uncertainty created by banks and federal governments. During the economic crisis, perhaps even more encouraging is the fact that during recent recessions in countries ranging from Greece to, Z to, to Zimbabwe, Bitcoin prices have noticeably spiked. Bitcoin has helped numerous countries during nationwide recessions. And what this all means for speculators, will, will Bitcoin go up in a recession of a larger scale? Now, remember, Bitcoin is tied to no country, and sometimes in the U.S. we have tunnel vision as this almost kind of conceited, narrow view instead of taking in the much bigger picture. Bitcoin is global 
open and settled 24-7 all over the world. So Bitcoin's history is much more thorough in a sense than we believe. So let's go back in time to the last global recession. Known as the Great Recession of 2008, the Great Recession was the longest period of economic decline experienced on a worldwide scale since the Great Depression 80 years earlier. <laughs> Oh, it smells like a fourth turning in here. And that's no wonder, then, that the 08 recession greatly reduced most Americans' trust in traditional financial institutions, such as the federal governments and banks. This is key to understanding Bitcoin and its possible performance and behavior in response to another global downturn. Now, it was into this world. Bitcoin came onto the scene. On January 3rd, 2009, Bitcoin was launched under the pseudonymous Satoshi Nakamoto. The announcement that Bitcoin had gone live was accompanied by an embedded message that said, Quote, the Times, January 3rd, 2009. Chancellor on the brink of second bailout for banks. This statement references a headline made that day in a widespread UK newspaper discussing how billions more might be needed for a second bank bailout. Bitcoin was built for this and Bitcoin fixes this. In some of the early writings about Bitcoin, Satoshi discussed, quote, the root problem with conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. Individuals who, who deal in traditional currencies and fiat, which is of course currently most of the world's population, must have confidence that banks and federal governments will handle that money in a responsible manner. Meanwhile, federal governments act as if money is infinite, leading to damaging effects on the population such as inflation and unemployment. And to quote Satoshi again, banks lend out money, quote, in waves of credit bubbles with barely a fraction in their reserves, meaning that national debts balloon without limits. And this goes back to some of what Ron Paul was telling us about the business cycle and the Fed earlier. In other words, Bitcoin was created to both survive and thrive during the next global recession. Let's go ahead and take a look country by country on some of the success uh, Bitcoin has seen in recessions. All right, let's go ahead and get it started up here with Turkey. As we can take a look, during Turkey's financial struggles in mid-2018, the national fiat cu currency lost 20% of its value in a single day. Just a few months later, the country's inflation reached 15-year highs. Meanwhile, the volume of trades on exchanges based in Turkey went up 37%. Their largest uh, crypto exchange raised trading volume by 63%, and a smaller trading site reported 100% spikes in trades. Let's look at Venezuela. In 2013, steep inflation making even the highest denomination of a printed bill worth around two pennies that left many people unable to pay for essential goods. Venezuelans found relief in Bitcoin. The Venezuelan Bitcoin brokerage site, Sir Bitcoin, surged its user base in just two years from 450 to 85,000, and the trading volume from Venezuela on local Bitcoins back then reached as high as 370 a week. Now we got Zimbabwe after it uh, encountered its inflation. Given the ban they put into effect, kind of difficult for data about the precise usage. However, the presence of Bitcoin in Zimbabwe is so important that the UN wrote a report discussing how significant portion of Zimbabwe citizens along with residents of other African nations use Bitcoin to combat hyperinflation in their fiat currencies. Argentina, we've seen the news there. Hong Kong, I mean, it goes on and on. We have a little bit of a longer history and this is uh, Hong Kong in 2019 and Argentina like today is going through it and embracing Bitcoin. We know of all the great things in Africa. Again, Bitcoin was created to survive and thrive during a recession. Now, while the evidence that Bitcoin will do well in a worldwide recession is promising, Bitcoin was first created during a recession because its creator believed that banks and governments cannot be trusted to handle citizens' money wisely. Moreover, the mighty orange coin, Bitcoin has performed well during recessions that have happened on smaller scale in individual countries. Now the scale is just becoming bigger. What do you think that means? Let us know what you think in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. Check out our other amazing content. We're out here on the mission. Make sure you keep tuning in and don't miss Simply Bitcoin Live Monday through Friday at 1215. Until next time, peace.